For President Lincoln, the Civil War was about the greatest of causes, the end of slavery, widening equality, pursuit of justice, the creation of opportunity, and the sanctity of freedom. His words would live ever after. We hear them in our heads, we know them in our hearts, we draw on them when we seek hope in hours of darkness. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Here, on this sacred ground, Abraham Lincoln reimagined America itself. Here, a president of the United States spoke of the price of division and the meaning of sacrifice. He believed in the rescue, redemption, and rededication of the Union. All this in a time not just of ferocious division, but of widespread death, structural inequity, and fear of the future. And he taught us this, a house divided could not stand. That is a great and timeless truth. Today, once again, we are a house divided. But that, my friends, can no longer be. We are facing too many crises. We have too much work to do. We have too bright a future to have a, a shipwrecked on the shoals of anger and hate and division. As we stand here today, a century and a half later after Gettysburg, we should consider again what can happen when equal justice is denied, when anger and violence and division are left unchecked. As I look across America today, I'm concerned. The country is in a dangerous place. Our trust in each other is ebbing. Hope seems elusive. Too many Americans see our public life not as an arena for mediation of our differences, but rather they see it as an occasion for total, unrelenting partisan warfare. Instead of treating each other's party as the opposition, we treat them as the enemy. This must end. We need to revive the spirit of bipartisanship in this country, a spirit of being able to work with one another. When I say that, and I've been saying it for two years now, I'm accused of being naive. I'm told maybe that that's the way. I'm pausing it for a second. I have to interject real quick. Um, of course, for, this is a disclaimer of what I'm going to say. I'm so far still voting for Trump. With that said, um, Biden, um, you come as a peacemaker. I think so far what I've saw is this is your best speech I've ever heard. Ever heard. And I hope you continue it uh, when I watch it and continue it and bring up Antifa and the violence in Black Lives Matter and how we need to settle our differences in a court of law or in the minds and the hearts of our enemies with dialogue, right? Um, as far as uh, uh, our Creator, you know, made us and all, you know, uh, an unalienable rights or whatever, certain unalienable rights, uh, um, you know, we're all created uh, in God's image and all this and that. Uh, you know, um, men are created all equal, right? Created. When were men created? In the womb, right? It's when God knitted man in the womb. And that includes woman. When we desecrate that man or woman that supposedly have equal rights to us, a baby in the womb should have equal rights as I do, because they're created with certain unalienable rights. 
just because they're in a womb. They're a renter for a little while. Doesn't mean they don't have humanitarian rights to live. But with that exception so far, Biden, I wish to God you'd have did this speech going against abortion, but this so far is your finest speech I've ever heard. Many things used to work, Joe, but they can't work that way anymore. Well, I'm here to tell you they can, and they must, if we're going to get anything done. I'm running as a proud Democrat, but I will govern as an American president. I'll work with Democrats and Republicans. I'll work as hard for those who don't support me as those who do. That's the job of a president. That's a promise. Okay. The duty to care for everyone. Refusal of Democrats and Republicans to cooperate with one another is not due to some mysterious force beyond our control. It's a decision. It's a choice we make. And if we can decide not to cooperate, we can decide to cooperate as well. That's the choice I'll make as president. But there's something bigger going on in this nation. I just let this point out, so maybe his politics. handlers can tell him. Trump, in his own way, denounced the dangerous. Proud Boys. At least, Biden needs to denounce Antifa. At least, viewpoints give life to and make it a really great, unifying speech. Denounce the deeper. violence in Antifa. Too many at least, seek not to overcome our divisions, but to deepen them. We must seek not to build walls, but bridges. We must seek not to have our fists clenched, but our arms open. We have to seek not to tear each other apart, but seek to come together. You don't have to agree with me on everything, or even on most things. To see that we're experiencing today is neither good nor normal. I made the decision to run for president after Charlottesville. Close your eyes and remember what you saw. Neo-Nazis, white supremacists. Okay, you can, that's the fair. KKK that's fair to bring up. With torches lighted, if you bring up the left, bulging, the plank in the left side. the same anti-Semitic bile heard across Europe in the 30s. It was hate on the march. This is not unifying open, if you... In America, hate never goes away, it only hides. And when it's given oxygen, when it's given an opportunity to spread, when it's treated as normal and acceptable behavior, we've opened a door in this country that we must move quickly to close. As president, that's just what I will do. I will send a clear, unequivocal message to the entire nation. There is no place for hate in America. How about your, your I'll party? Be given, it will be given no license. It will be given no oxygen. That's how you get no credibility. Safe harbor. Is to say, yes, there's problems in, in our party months, too. And I denounce the it. The has been riled by he, he instances of excessive say that to hit a home force. run. He has to say something about the left cases and the violence in the left. Lives needlessly and lost. He wants to unify, right? By That's peaceful the right protesters tactic. giving voice to the calls for justice. By examples of violence and looting and burning that cannot be tolerated. Good. All right. Now you now you got I scored. In law and order. You scored. I've never supported the funding of the police, but I also believe injustice is real. It's a product of a history that goes back 400 years. The moment when black men, women, and children first were brought here in chains. I do not believe we have to choose that's between Stoke and law racial, and order uh, anger. and racial justice in America. Yeah, it's, that's stoking it now. We can't have both. This is a nation strong enough to both honestly face systemic racism and strong enough to provide safe streets for our families and small businesses that too often bear the brunt of this looting and burning. We have no need for armed militias roaming America's streets. And we should have no tolerance 
for extremist white supremacy groups menacing our communities. If you say we should trust America's law enforcement authorities if they to do are, the job, um, as I do, they said there were some reports of that, so I'm not arguing with it. Without extremist groups acting as vigilantes. That's, you that we shouldn't no be tolerated. To uh, we can't let country. Trump be king. Don't go out and do things on your own accord. It won't work out been for powerful you. Powerful voices for justice in recent weeks and months. George Floyd's six year old daughter, who I met with, who looked at me and said, We're trying to make peace, right? Voice, so we have to cool people down. The world. Also, Jacob Blake's mother was another when she said, Violence didn't reflect her son, and this nation needed healing. And Doc Rivers, the basketball coach, choking back tears when he said, we're the ones getting killed. We're the ones getting shot. We've been hung. My, it's my uncle got hung. Loving this country. My uh, nephew this country does not got kind of killed. A mysterious heart problem, young, 20s. That. Um, I think about what it takes lots of stuff is a lot of my people have died that is a deep Brandy my girlfriend cancer that is for far too um, long Sarah from heroin in her arm some of my people have died too doc seeks to de-escalate tensions to open lines of communication to bring us together to heal to hope as Ozzy and I could just go on we paid a high price for allowing the deep divisions in this country to impact on how we deal Shot with Shot by his virus. brother, Keevan. 210,000 Americans dead, and the numbers climbing. It's estimated that nearly another 210,000 well, Americans could lose their lives by the end of the year. I'm impressed. I'm still voting Enough. for Trump. No but more. I'm impressed by Biden. I'm Let's impressed. I really am. He's, com side. he's coming. If he would have just went that science. extra huge step, wearing a mask, wearing a mask is not a political statement. Stop killing babies. We can find other ways to fund the Democrats. Social distancing. I would. I would. I would have melted. Statement. It's a scientific recommendation. 